a warm welcome to you, my dear children. Um, today, with business and accounting studies, with our subject, we move on to a new unit, new unit, a new lesson, that is prime entry books. Prime entry books. This is the unit seven, seventh lesson in your textbook, in your syllabus, prime entry books. New lesson, right? First, we'll check out what we have to learn in this unit. The breakdown of subtopics. So, as you can see, children, we have the following subtopics, facts, to be discussed in this chapter. First subtopic, what do we have? We have the introduction to prime entry books. Introduction to prime entry books. Now, it says prime entry books. It says books. So, it's obvious that we are going to learn about some books. Uh, books, it can be various types of books which are used in accounting, right? It can be things that you haven't heard of. It can be things that you don't know. But no worries, we are going to learn about these books. So, prime entry books. Prime entry books. We are going to learn what prime entry books are. Right? Simple things. No worries. These are not very complex things. It's just a set of books which are used in accounting. 7.2, that means the next subtopic, we are going to learn about the necessity of prime entry books. Why are they necessary? What is the reason? Why do we use them? Hmm? What is the use of prime entry books? What the role of prime entry books in accounting? What the role is? You are going to learn what is the role of prime entry books in accounting. The necessity, the importance. So, then we get something new again. Source documents. Source documents. Well, these things, I'm sure that uh, some of you may have heard, but some of you may have not. New. Most of you are finding these things new. Which means you, 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 you don't know, you haven't heard these things. Source documents. But just like before, I'm going to draw your attention to this word. Documents. Source documents uh, which means it's obviously it should be something to do with documents it must be something related to documents previously it was books that's why i told you obviously it must be some sort of uh, books you get that idea in your head and you get some pictures about books and you wonder what these books are well soon you're gonna learn what these books are likewise soon you're gonna learn what these documents are some sort of documents used in accounting let's learn let's learn no worries then we are gonna learn finally what is the use of these documents what is the use of source documents? Hmm? Why are they important in accounting? Why, for what do we use them in accounting? Yeah? These things you are going to learn in this unit, the unit 7. And it's a short unit. Let's make it fun. Right, children? So. Prime entry books in accounting. So let's see uh, what these prime entry books are.
we have uh, this question on the screen. What are primary books? What are primary books? Well, children, you can clearly see what the pictures, what the pictures are showing you. The pictures show in both the pictures a set of books. A set of books, right? And there is another word, another name on screen. In this picture, they have mentioned subsidiary books. And that is another name. Yeah, now we started with prime entry books. Now there's another name, subsidiary books. What are all these books? What are these? Well, children, it is nothing special, nothing new. You have seen, you have already um, seen these books and how, how the books are used in a business. Just think of a moment, think of a moment uh, that you went to a shop. Hmm? Think of a moment that you went to a shop. I'm not talking about uh, supermarkets and these large scale shops. I'm talking about these roadside, small, small retail shops. Uh, maybe the shop in the junction. You call it Handi Ekade. Uh, Handi Ekade. Right? Or those small, small boutiques. Uh, retail shops, groceries, pharmacies, hmm? hardware shops small small businesses which are all always seen in every town both sides of the road main road you have seen you have gone to these businesses right in those businesses you don't have most of the time you don't have self service you don't get to have a cart and push the cart and go around the shop Shopping for the goods that you like. You don't get those facilities in those small, small shops. Do you? No, you don't get the self-service facility. No. Most of the time when you go to these shops, there's a molalali, the shopkeeper. You ask for the goods from the molalali. You ask him. You tell him, uh, molalali, what are they chocolate uh, That's how you uh, go and get the goods that you want. You don't get to push a cart and go around. <laughs> no, not in these small shops. But in these small shops, you definitely you might have seen this thing, these books that we are talking about. Remember when you asked for the goods from the Mudalali, hmm? Mudalali gives you the goods and he adds up your uh, the value of the goods, the, the prices, and tell you the total. Something like that. He will, he will tell you the total that you have to pay. And when you pay the amount, he takes the amount and he puts the money to his drawer. Large shoot, eh? Drawer. And he takes the balance and he gives you the balance and he, he will offer you the goods in a grocery bag. Huh? He will give you the goods, all the goods put in a shopping bag. Soon after your goods are delivered, I mean, handed over to you, he puts a small note in a book. He writes the total um, amount in a small book that he has on his table. Books. That is what we are going to talk. That is what we are going to talk about today in this lesson. Prime 
entry books. See children, these are the books which these shopkeepers, the modalalis, they keep on their desks, on their tables to write down every amount, every value, every sale, every transaction which is done during the day. They just write down. It's a small book. They just get the book and they turn to the page and they write the amount and they just put away the book. That's it. When another transaction occurs, again he, he gets the book, he opens the book and he goes to the page and he writes the amount and keeps it back. Again, when a transaction occurs, again he, he searches for the book. Oh yeah, he takes, writes, puts it away. Oh, sometimes the book is always open on the table. The book. These are the books that we are talking about. Primary books. Right? So, if you got an idea about what we are going to talk about, what we are going to discuss, we'll come up with a definition, shall we? Yeah. Now you know what these books are, right? And most of you people, most of you students, uh, you may have seen even how these books are lying around the desks or uh, beside the cashier of these small shops, uh -huh. these grocery shops and these small shops. These books are always on the cashier, on the, on the uh, uh, table. A mudalari's table. <laughs> yes. So, the definition, usually children, it comes out like this. What are primary books? Primary books are a set of primary books are the set of books in which transactions in which transactions are recorded transactions are recorded at first recorded at first yeah the, the, the set of books, set of books in which the transactions are recorded at first, then and there when the transactions occur, when the, when, when the transactions happen, soon as the Mudalali, when he gives the goods to you um, and he takes the money and he writes that amount in that primary book. So then and there, when and when and at the at the point of the transaction, every time the transaction, every time a, a, a transaction happens, it is recorded. It is recorded right there. You got it. So before I'm writing this word before. And I'm asking you a question now. Before what? Before what? I wrote the word before. Before. Before what? Well, students who uh, watched the previous sessions and how the previous lessons uh, were done and what were done in the previous lessons, those students, you, my dear children, you must remember that I myself, when doing the previous uh, lesson, previous unit, chapter 6 and chapter 5, I told you that every transaction that occurs in a business must be recorded in ledger 
accounts as a double entry. You must remember this. You must remember this. I know that you remember this. I told you that every transaction that occurs in a business must be recorded in the ledger accounts. In the ledger. According to the double entry system. Every transaction has a dual impact. Every transaction has a dual impact. Dual. Double. Dual impact. When a transaction occurs, let's take an example transaction. Let's say that um, sold goods worth of uh, 1500 on credit. Let's take that transaction. Goods were sold worth of 1500 on credit without taking money, without paying. The customer took the goods, but uh, we didn't get the money. So it, it, it's a credit transaction. It's a credit transaction. That transaction we'll take as an example. What effect does that transaction have? What effect does it have? What impact does it have? on the business, on the business assets, on the business liabilities. I told you that every transaction, like that transaction, each and every transaction has a dual impact. Two effects. Something increases in the business. At the same time, due to the transaction, something increases and something decreases. Or something increases and the other thing also increases. Or something decreases and the other thing also decreases because of every transaction. I have taught you, you have learned these things, children. Then when I gave you the transaction, uh, goods sold on credit, goods sold on credit worth of 1500, goods go out, goods are sold, right? Goods are sold, goods are sold. A customer takes the goods from the business. So the, 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 the goods that the business has decreased because of the transaction. That is one effect. Goods decrease. Goods decrease. Right? If the customer paid for the goods, if he paid cash, 1,500, then and there, although the goods went out, Cash came in, so cash increases. Goods went out, so goods decreased, but cash increased. That is the dual impact. We have learned about these things. Yeah? If the, if the transaction was done on credit, if the, if the customer did not pay cash, then and there, although the goods decreased, cash doesn't come to the business. No cash coming into the business. So although the goods decrease, Cash doesn't increase. Then what? Then no dual impact. There is a dual impact. Every transaction has a dual impact. Goods decrease because the customer didn't pay. He owe us now. So he becomes a debtor. We get a new debtor. New debtor. To our business. So debtors increase. Goods decrease, that's because the goods were sold. And debtors increase, that's because the customer becomes a debtor because of that transaction. We get a new debtor to our business. That is a dual impact. One decreases, the other increases. Or both decreases or both increases. These things are recorded in ledger accounts as a double entry. We did a lot of ledger accounts. So when transactions are recorded in ledger accounts, what is the need of prime entry books? What are these books? What do we use them for? For what do we use them? Children, get this to your heads right now. Prime entry books are the set of books 
in which transactions are recorded at first at first get this at first make it clear right now at first because when a transaction happens children the mudalali or the bookkeeper of the business then and there they cannot open these ledgers and they cannot record the transaction as a double entry searching for the relevant accounts and entering the transaction then and there in a business when a lot of transactions occur when a lot of transactions when a lot of customers are waiting searching for accounts and drawing accounts and recording double entries is not possible it's not practical so what the mudalali or the bookkeeper or the whoever the the business has to record the transactions if it is a sole tradership the mudalali himself hmm, he quickly records this amount only in a book then and there when the transaction occurs then he can attend to the next customer without searching for accounts and without saying oh uh, sir I, I, I can't attend to you I, I can't give you the goods right now uh, I, uh, I have to record the previous transaction in my books so where, where is the sales uh, account where is the cash account uh, no it's not practical it's not practical it's simply not practical so searching for accounts and recording in double entry accounts is not practical then and there when a transaction happens that's why these books are kept primary books all right so that is the true the, the the real the real scenario the practical scenario that happens in a business which is which is having customers which is having a lot of business every day all right that is the practical scenario so these books are kept in order to record every transaction then and there um, in a very rough manner okay so just because these are used these books are used on a daily basis these books are also called day books day books just because they are used daily every day in a business day books right so that is the basic uh, explanation which should be given which which you should understand uh, the idea you should have in your heads right regarding these books so when i wrote this word before i asked you before what Hmm? When I wrote before here, I asked you before what? Before, before the transactions, before the transactions are entered in the ledger. Before that, before the transactions are entered in the ledger. Before the transactions are entered in the ledger. That is where uh, the primary books come into play. That is where the pri primary books uh, become useful for a business. Because when the transactions are entered into ledger accounts, you, you you refer to the prime entry books you take the transactions from the prime entry books to the ledger accounts yeah because directly every time a transaction happens the transactions cannot be recorded in ledger accounts the 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 modalis or the bookkeepers they can't draw accounts and record the transactions when the customers are waiting when the customers when there are more customers they have to look after the business 
they can't be you know uh, getting they can't be getting involved with the accounts right business operations the business must be uh, carried out the customers must be attended to uh, that's why the, the transactions are going to these books so as you can see children the books are mm, various right see one two three like like different books in different colors it's easy to keep separate books for different 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 types of transactions okay so uh, the the transactions when when they are recorded in the books uh, the same type of transactions are, are always recorded in the same book and different types of transactions when 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 a different type of a transaction uh, occur when a different type of transaction occur it is recorded in a separate book example sales are recorded in a different book purchases are recorded in a different book well let's find out how the transactions are recorded in which books what are the main prime entry books here you go children this uh, this page is from the textbook and this table is in your textbook it shows the main prime entry books the types of prime entry books different different prime entry books all right first we have the cash book all right first cash book so when somebody says cash book Uh, you can of course understand what transactions are recorded in the cash book do you record credit transactions naya without cash when a transaction occurs when a customer buys on credit do you record in this no it's the cash book you record the cash transactions only not the credit transactions okay naya doesn't go to this book this book has only the cash transactions get it cash book has cash transactions it's simple let's see what uh, the explanation is um, it says transactions related to the receivings and payings of cash goes to this book transactions related to receiving and paying receiving and pay, paying like receipts and payments of cash let's say you pay uh, pay an electricity bill cash transaction cash goes out to pay the electricity bill you have to spend cash you have to pay so that is a cash transaction cash cash goes out it's a cash payment it goes to this book cash book yeah let's say uh, uh, you pay the salary of an employee it's a payment cash goes out cash expense it's a cash payment so goes to this book should be recorded in the cash book let's say uh, you sell goods you sell uh, a stock of goods a stock of goods uh, go out from the business all right but the customer pays cash so cash comes in that is also a cash transaction it's, it's a cash receipt receiving you say receipt receipt that's also a cash transaction so it goes to this likewise simple um, all the cash transactions should be recorded in this all these amounts spent and all these amounts received should be recorded in this book okay cash book next we have what that is the second prime entry book yeah this one bank account what do you think uh, that 
businesses, uh, businesses uh, record in the bank account. What do you think? What type of transactions go to this book or the account? Bank account. If you want, you can say bank book. It doesn't matter. Bank account or bank book. What type of transactions go to this? What type of transactions? Check transactions. Well, when you look at the description, it says transactions carried out through the bank current account. What transactions are carried out through the current account? Check transactions. Most of the businesses have current accounts. Current accounts give you the facility of checks. Checks. And when a check is received, you don't put it to the cash book. You don't put that amount. The check uh, that you received, you don't put it to the cash book. You put it to the bank book. Because it's a it's a check, it's a bank transaction. Check goes to the bank. When you buy a check, when you pay using a using a check, you write a check to somebody, you write a check, check, and you sign it and you pay. You pay using the, the check. It's a bank transaction. It is related to the bank. The check goes to the bank. Money in the bank. Cash at bank. So the increasings and decreasings, okay? Increasings and decreasings of cash at bank. The, the transactions you use using checks, transactions done using checks. Goes to this. Yeah? Next we have what? Next we have the petty cash book. Petty cash book. Don't say petty cash, all right? That is not the correct pronunciation. <laughs> it's petty cash, not petty cash. Petty. Petty cash book. Well, there is a cash book and we already learned that all the cash transactions are recorded in the cash book. Uh, uh, what is the, the necessity, the need of another cash book? And that is named uh, as petty cash book. What is that? It says here, petty cash transactions. So what are recorded in the petty cash book? Petty cash transactions. And you wonder, hmm, petty cash transactions. What are petty cash transactions? Hmm? Children, petty cash transactions are the small, small daily payments which a business incur, which a business, uh, every business has. The small, small daily payments, like small amounts unconsiderable amounts I'll give you a quick example let's say uh, you have a laborer working in your hardware is a, a loader he, he, he who uh, unloads cement bags and uh, the concrete blocks and everything and loads to lorries he's a laborer and he comes and asks for uh, 50 rupees uh, to have a tea you can't say no He's, he's working for you, he's shedding his sweat for you, and he's, he's working hard. Physical laborers. He's asking for 50 rupees. You say, no, 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 I can't, I can't give you 50 because uh, I, I can't enter that amount into books. I have to uh, enter every, every transaction into books. Uh, no tea for you. Well, you can't say that. You have to give him that 50 rupees. You give him that 50 rupees and you enter that in the petty cash book. Because it's a very small transaction, very small 
uh, cash amount. It's not necessary to record the small, small, unconsiderable transactions like, like that in this. There is, this, it is not, actually it is not needed. Um, it is not necessary to record those type of small transactions in this, in the cash book. Yes, there are cash transactions, but not entered in the cash book. They are entered in the petty cash book. Petty cash book. Small, small daily payments in a business. Entered in the petty cash book. Right, so three books now, up to now, okay, cash transactions, all the cash uh, receivings and payings, payments, cash, goes to cash book, check received, check, checks received and checks paid, check transactions, bank related transactions go to bank book. And small, small, uh, daily, uh, unconsiderable, small cash transactions go to petty cash book. Okay. What do we have next? We have something. Ah, uh, new journal. It must be something new. Have you heard of uh, journals? It says purchases journal. Well, if you don't know this name, I'll give you this name. It is also called the purchases day book. Purchases day book. All the credit purchases. Huh? What does it provide? Uh, what is provided to you? What is the uh, detail provided to you. It says purchases of trading goods on credit. Purchasing. Purchasing simply means buying. When you buy stocks of goods, you know, boxes of, uh, let's say you, you are running a, if you are running a grocery shop, uh, you are buying biscuits and cheese and butter and chocolates and uh, stuff, goods. From the, from the suppliers. Let's say you bought um, a, a box of chocolate from Ritzbury, okay? And uh, uh, another box of uh, biscuits, Mari biscuits from uh, Manchi. And another uh, a box of uh, cream cracker biscuits and hmm. Uh, yeah, that, that stock you bought from uh, the, the supplier, right? Uh, a box of chocolate and a box of uh, Mari biscuits and a box of uh, cream cracker biscuits. All the goods bought to be resold. I mean, you need goods to sell to your customers. Those goods you purchase, you buy from suppliers. Right? The supplier is, uh, let's say, the Munchie company. You say, mm, uh, this bill, uh, this, this amount, I'll pay next week. When the lorry uh, comes around next week, for these goods I will pay the next time you come around. The next time you come, okay. Uh, uh, let the let me sell the goods first. After I sell the goods, I'll pay you. That's how the most uh, retailers. That's how most of the grocery shop owners, the retail shop owners, do business. They do not pay to the supplier then and there. They say, "Let me sell the goods." And pay you okay because the, the goods are yours and 
I'm buying, I'm buying, of course, I'm, I'm purchasing from you, uh, but I can't pay you. I will sell them and pay you. That, that's how most of the small retailers do business. So these purchases are done on credit. Those purchases go to this book. Purchases day book. On a daily basis, these shop owners buy a lot of goods from a lot of suppliers. All those credit purchases goes to the purchases book. Or you can call it the purchases journal. It doesn't matter. Credit purchases of trading goods. Right. Then children, then we have uh, another journal that is, that is the sales journal. That is the sales journal. Now, by now, you know what, what transactions are recorded in the purchases journal. So you can guess what transactions are recorded in the sales journal. Yeah, selling of goods. When, when goods are purchased, goods are purchased, you bring the goods to your shop and you display the goods uh, on your shelves and uh, you wait for customers and when, when the customers come, you say, ah, come with that one belly. Yeah, you ask the question. Huh? And, uh, and the, when the customer tells you what he needs or what she needs, you provide the goods. And if he or she says, Magava Adanang Me Saline, I can't pay you today, Mudalal. Uh, shall I pay you after um, uh, two days? That was taking Saline. This is the real scenario. This is the, this is the practical scenario in, in reality. In reality, this, this happens in reality. When customers tell you that they can't pay, uh, they don't have money, you have to, most of the time, children, you have to uh, sell them, sell the goods on credit. Okay? Well, a lot of customers pay then and there. But there are customers, you know, regular customers, in a village, in a, in a in your hometown, these people might be you know known. Maybe this person is your neighbor, neighbor's son, neighbor's daughter. <laughs> he comes and he says, "Uncle, I want a, I want a, a mari, a packet of mari. Uh, Ami uh, will pay you later. Ami ko hete sali den naki. You can say, do I'm not going to.'" sell goods uh, without money, you go and bring the money. You can't say that. It's not good for your business. You know, these are, these are practical things. So you sell goods sometimes on credit. Those transactions go, goes to this. Selling of trading goods on credit goes to this. Not cash sales, children, not cash sales. Cash sales does not go to the sales journal. Sales journal or sales day book. Sales day book. Selling of, otherwise you can say sales of credit. Credit sales of goods should be recorded in sales day book right so that's that finally we have the general journal general journal hmm? the general journal general journal it's general. The name itself 
says general. Well, it means children, there is no specific transaction to be recorded in this. There is no one specific transaction. Uh, there are many transactions, like many, 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 many transactions. The detail, uh, there is no detail explanation. It says other transactions. I'll give you a better explanation. Listen to this. General journal is used just like a garbage bin or just like a, the dustbin in your classroom. Every other thing, every uh, uh, transaction which cannot be recorded in these other books, all those things goes to this general journal. Right? Let's say the things you can't put to your put in your pencil box, the, 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 the things you can't put in your school bag, the things you can't put in your handbag, the things that you can't put in your uh, teacher's table, drawers and cupboards, all those things you put to the garbage bin. So <laughs> not garbage, not rubbish, I'm talking about transactions. Transactions which cannot be recorded in these other books goes to this book. General, general, right? So in a, in a later date, in a later session, we are going to learn about all these journals, all these books, one by one. One by one. One by one. No worries. This is just an introduction, children. How many books do we have? Six. We have six books all together. Six books to learn about. All right. Moving on. And uh, in this slide, it says that the uses of primary books the importance of primary books. And that is something that you should remember. These are, these things are things that you should remember. You should, okay. Um, I can point out on like when we, uh, uh, when we start to do uh, past paper questions, there are several Questions normally, usually, coming from primary books. Every year, several questions have come from primary books. The use of primary books, the importance of primary books. So, up to you to remember these things. Let's see what these things are. Why primary books are used in a business? Why? First, similar type of transactions of a period need to be classified and recorded. Similar types of transactions of a period need to be classified and recorded. Now you know children, when transactions occur, there are various transactions. All the transactions are not recorded in the same book. Uh, well, it will be an utter mess, right? If all the transactions are jumbled in one book and if you open that book, you will, you will not be able to sort out which is which. Right? This book will be like a... Huh? So, you know already that different types of transactions are recorded in different books. Cash transactions going to cash book, bank transactions going to bank book, uh, purchasing goods on credit are recorded in purchases book, selling goods on credit are recorded in the sales book, sales journal. So different types of transactions can be 
separately recorded in the relevant book. That is important. Huh? That is very important, isn't it? But think practically. It's it's very important. It's it makes the business transactions and recording of transactions and uh, everything very you know organized when transactions are separated looking at the the nature of the transaction like different transactions when they are recorded in different separate books it's very easy it's very organized yeah so uh, different different transactions of a period like, let's say in a month uh, they are classified and recorded so important that is one use second use posting transactions to the ledger becomes systematical and convenient after recording them in prime books I told you right I told you this told you right then and there when when transactions occur uh, in, a, in a normal day in your business you can't uh, open the ledger the ledger book and draw ledger accounts and record double entries then and there that the customers will will scold you will blackguard you and they will go to another shop they will say may modalali you, you until you record the transactions in your in your accounts we can't wait that's what going to happen so First of all, when the transactions are occurring, you record the transactions in the prime books, like in a, like a very, very quick note. You just write the amount and you put the book away and you attend to the customers. In that way, children, the, 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 the prime entry books, the usage of prime entry books is very, it, it's making the business very, uh, you know, systematic. Huh? That's why it says, Posting transactions to ledger becomes systematical and easy. You can later, like after the business is closed down, when the roller gate is you know closed at six o'clock in the evening, you can have a tea and have a wash and Mudalali, you know, relaxed. At leisure, ah, then he takes the ledger book then he goes to the ledger accounts and refers to the prime entry books which he uses in the business in the shop and then he refers to the prime entry books then he looks at the cash book ah then he is able to is you know he can very easily know what Transactions, cash transactions have, have, have happened. What, what transactions, what cash transactions have happened? How much of cash received? How much of cash paid? And then he can get an idea about the day's operations. Right? These are very practical children. These things happen, actually happen. Yeah. Then looking at the prime entry book, looking at the cash book, he can record the cash transactions in the cash account, the ledger. He can put the double entries to the ledger. Yeah. At leisure, at leisure, at leisure, like in the evening after the shop is closed. Hmm? Do you get a picture of how the transactions, how the bookkeeping is done? Yes, children. This is the real scenario. Okay. So uh, it says posting transactions to the ledger accounts becomes systematical and uh, easy. Convenient means easy. Okay. After they are recorded in the prime entry.
Next use, responsibility of preparing each primary book can be assigned distinctly to various individuals. Distinctly to various individuals. And accordingly, the business could minimize errors and frauds. Well, it's a small, if it is a small retail shop, children like a, a grocery uh, shop or a, you know, petty kade, uh, 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 um, likewise a small uh, retail shop, if that is the case, there will be no separate bookkeeper or accountant. There will be no staff in the shop. Most of the time, only the Mudalali is there. He who uh, records the transactions then and there in the in the primary books. Okay. But if it is a slightly bigger, larger business, separate individuals can be kept to maintain separate books different different books they can be given the responsibility of maintaining the set of books hmm? there is a, 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 a separate individual uh, to maintain the cash book well that can be done hmm? there is a separate individual to look after the purchases of the business. So the purchases day book is with him. That becomes, you know, that, 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 that makes the business operations easier and minimize the errors and frauds. You know frauds? Do you know frauds? I will mark it with red. Mm -hmm. Frauds, children, frauds. Mm -hmm. Your employees or your own staff, workers, sometimes can, you know, steal from you. Um, these things happen. Uh, they can do uh, misleading things and lies and they can uh, you know what I'm saying right they can uh, cheat you and take the business money they can uh, cheat and mm, uh, business cash business incomes can be taken by these these type of uh, uh, individuals those uh, frauds and uh, misleading cheatings can be minimized if each book is maintained by an individual that is what this point says that is also uh, uh, an importance of primary books keeping primary books Next, we have, it is easy to maintain ledger because total of prime entry books are posted to the ledger. It's something like this, children. It's easy to maintain the ledger because the totals of prime entry books are posted to the ledger. It's something like this. Uh, when a month ends, when a month ends, like 31st of, uh, let's say 31st of August, all the prime entry books are, uh, taken and they are totaled you know you sum up you sum up all the um, all the prime books and you take the month end sum to the ledger accounts that also uh, makes preparing the ledger accounts easier that makes preparing the ledger accounts easier right so uh, it is easy to maintain Ledger because the total of primary books are posted to the ledger at the 
end of a month. Last but not least, minimizes the occurrence of accounting errors. Again, the same uh, similar point to this one. Yeah, this point, the last point is similar to this one. It can minimize the occurrence of errors. Even though errors occur, it's easy to trace out errors when you have a set of prime entry books, um, different books for different transactions. It's very easy to trace out errors. And errors occur very uh, uh, rarely. Errors occur. But it's minimized. Okay. Errors are minimized by the prime entry books. There you go, children. The importance of prime entry books or why prime entry books are used in a business. Right? At least try to remember three or four. You will find it important. You will find it useful in your exam. Right? You get what I'm saying? Likewise, children, now we know, we have a basic idea. You all have a basic idea what these prime entry books are and why they are used in a business. Why they are used in a business. But in this screen, when we end this, uh, this content, there is another thing that, that is coming uh, later on. It says information of the transactions are obtained from source documents. Right? Yeah, I want you to pay attention on that source documents. Mm, when we started the lesson children, I told you that we have to learn about this set of books, prime entry books, and we took an introduction. We got an introduction about prime, uh, prime entry books. Then the necessity of prime entry books also. We learned the necessity or the use of prime entry books. That also we learned. This is the next thing that we have to learn. Source documents. That's why I uh, brought your attention on this. That's what we are going to learn next. In order to prepare prime entry books, in order to record transactions in prime entry books, children, there is something that businesses need okay those are called source documents that you are going to learn in the next session so with this knowledge we will move on and learn about source documents um, so hope to see you soon children with the next part of this lesson chapter 2 of unit 7 Thank you very much. See you soon.